And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Champlain Esports against uh, RMU. I still have no idea what that stands for. <clears throat> is that... What uh, and I'm back. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but what I do know is that RMU is a very, very famous um, uh, team. Uh, they have been covered by the actual uh, Riot Games Collegial Spotlight before. So they are a very, very big team. Um, they're very good. So something to be very scared of, to be honest. Um, however, I think that, you know, we've played our best all season. We've done pretty good. I have faith that we can pull it together for the uh, the end, as it were. Definitely. I think Champlain Esports has it in them to actually do well this game. They just have to play a little bit harder than they have been in the past. They need to make sure that their teamwork, most importantly, is on point. And yeah. uh, no flashy showboating and trying to uh, basically just kind of throw the game by being the best. <laughs> Classic I've, seen, I've seen that a few times where it's like, hey, I'm going to go in really hard for this kill and it'll be really cool. And that kind of leads them to a very, uh, very big disadvantage. So speaking of disadvantages, right off the bat, we're going to see uh, RMU banning out Nautilus, Lee Sin, and Lulu. So Nautilus, even though he just got recently nerfed with his E, is still a very big player in this uh, current meta now. I don't yep, know, yep. I don't, and nothing changed about him. I think people just discovered that Nautilus is very effective at what he does. He's got a boatload of CC, and he's just kind of a, a big, bulky guy that you have to deal with either in the top lane, the jungle, or as a support. Versatility is very uh, very strong when it comes to Nautilus here. Mm -hmm. I think uh, mm -hmm. Lee Sin might be a respect ban for uh, our team, which <laughs> which very nice of them, I guess, because I guess they show their respects to... Uh, how good Lee Sin is. They are pressing F to pay their respects. Mm -hmm. And Lulu as well. I know we played Lulu in the yeah. past, but I think that's the only reason they banned her, banned her actually, is because we played her pretty well mid lane in the past. Mm -hmm. So first pick, Gragas. Uh, blue team is the uh, <coughs> RMU team. Yeah, uh, yep. blue team is the RMU team. Um, and then over on the Champlain team, first picks, purple side, is going to be Alistair and Echo. Okay, Alistair is a good pick. Alistair is always very contested support. Um, he does everything, essentially. <laughs> he is a very, very good support. Everything you really need. Um, and Echo, we saw some fantastic plays at Echo in the last round of games. Of course, yes. Um, yeah. Echo is really good right now. He's a solid jungler. He has good CC. He does good damage. He's pretty mobile. He's so all-around solid champion. Makes sense. Good pick. Over on the RMU side, the next two picks are going to be Callista and Poppy. Again, solid picks. Um, don't know where Pop is going to be yet. He could be support. He could be jungle. Sorry, uh, not jungle. Could be support. He could be top lane. We don't know. Um, but again, Callista is always a easy pick. Of course, Callista, as we've seen, at least when it comes to the the collegiate uh, star league, or I think that's what it is, right? That's the CSL collegiate star league. Yep. That's what we're doing. Yep. From yep. what I've seen, at the very least, what we've done with them, or with what, what we've seen in this kind of meta, is that uh, Callista is a very, very popular pick. Especially mm -hmm. team up with Alistar, but good pick on us for uh, picking that one first. And our team is starting to shape together a little bit. Now picking yeah. up Caitlyn and Ka picking up Malphite. Malphite's always good. <laughs> Malphite being, I think they knocked him down a little bit. A little bit. There was a small nerf to his um, AoE damage. Yeah, but still, Malphite but does. still, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's still Malphite. He's ridiculous. And uh, Caitlyn is a very safe carry. She, with the buff to her traps, she's been doing fairly well when it comes to damage, too. She's got a... She's still queen of the bottom lane, just poking out and harassing and making sure the enemy team can't really do much of anything. With that, securing the lead and trying to carry that over to the mid game. But, however, on a blue team, we see them picking out Zarath and Trundle. Now, which... Zarath is a very interesting choice. It is. I'm, uh, I'm, I have this uh, strange feeling that they're, this might be a pocket strat for them. Like yeah, or just at least a, a very, very comfort pick. Exactly, where it's just a very, uh, or it might be because they're anticipating that Echo's going to be in the mid lane, so they wanted to pick someone that would, you know, comfortably deny him. Yeah, definitely, definitely. However, uh, they still can pick someone else to go into the jungle here, or go into the mid lane, so they might be able to counter pick the Zerath right off the bat. One of the advantages of picking last. Yeah. But Trundle absolutely. also, they nerfed him too, but he just keeps but coming very back. Good. So like Trundle support, I'm going to guess. Um, Trundle support. Yeah, oh yeah, Trundle support's a thing. I mean, it could be Poppy, we don't know, but Trundle supports, it's enough of a thing. Really, really good sustain, really good harass. Um, I expect Poppy support a little bit more. Um, I mean, honestly, go either way. Mm -hmm. uh, in top lane, yeah, so, yeah, so Poppy's going to be top lane, and Trundle's support, I called it, I win, Paul wins again. 
just, Paul I just always wins. See, I've just Hashtag never seen Paul always wins. I just never seen it before. There's a new one for me. Oh, actually, what? Trundle's going top and Poppy's going support. Oh, god damn it! Oh, and Dimitri. Oh, oh. No, they switched back. No. Oh, oh, and Paul wins again. Paul. <laughs> no, they keep switching it. Switching it. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh this god. game is already really intense. We're already going at it. Oh my god! Absolutely. Oh my god! I'm Switch so. Strats. I'm just so. This super game is already hype, and we still have 18 seconds and three minutes before the game starts. I'm just so freaking. Wow. Triggered right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's I like a switch. It, it's Poppy like, jungle. Oh, oh they oh, keep going. Who, who hear that? Oh no! But it seems like they're resting on Trundle and top lane. Five, four, three, two. Any more last one. picks? One last switch. Switches? Is that it? No, that's it. Ooh. Dimitri takes the cup. Trundle's going in top lane. Poppy going as support. Unless I mean, Trundle has TP support. I, mean, I don't know. Anyway, I mean, it might work. Oh, oh last minute, too. Poppy last picks ignite. Interesting play. I mean, big, big place. a lot of supports picking Knight, especially when they're like Poppy, when most of their supporting power comes from just how much sheer damage they can do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So good to get that yeah, early game big, pick uh, off. Yeah, big switch is coming out. That's like yes, a magic player switches. shuffling his deck or shuffling his hand, making sure the enemy team can uh, can't get a good read on what's going to happen. Absolutely, as a magic player, I I ridiculously shuffle my hand. Just I I can't stop it. It's it, honestly it's it's scary. Yeah, yeah, big Whew. big uh. Big counter reading attempt coming yes. out of the RMU team. Well, that was that was quite the stressful. Pick. I think that was the most stressful pick phase of this entire season. No, I think I'm going gray from that one. That was that was pretty rough. Whew, so, here we okay. go. All right, now so the, team comps. Now Let's talk hand, about the RMU team. What are they trying to do here? Yep. So now that we've uh, their hand has been solidified, we see Trundle top, Callista and Poppy hopefully bottom, mid lane Zarath. He's got TP, but I mean it's Zarath. It's not really that much of a surprise. And. Uh, Jungle Gragas. So we've seen Jungle Gragas so many times. Being a you know avid spectator of uh, Champlain Esports teams, we know it can work. We know it has a potential to do well when it comes to this game. So when it comes to their team, what they're trying to do, I think they're just trying to create enough room to snuff out whatever damage that uh, Champlain has. Between the Poppy, between the Gragas, and between the Trundle, it's all about displacement. It's all about making sure that if the enemy team has any kind of formation or any kind of plan to pursue any kind of actions like team fighting or ganking, that their team can disrupt it in so many different ways. So basically they're also, with that, creating room for the Callista to do damage and the Zerath in the back line to do damage. Okay, yeah, sounds pretty good to me. Meanwhile, the Champlain team. Meanwhile, the Champlain team, their team comp is actually much of the same. However, it's more CC focused as opposed to uh, displacement focused. So you got uh, knock up knockups from uh, Malphite, Alistar, Oriana. You got slow coming from you got slow and stun coming from uh, what's his face Echo Echo my man and yeah, you got snare coming out from Caitlyn. So all of their team has a relatively decent amount of CC to them. Like every single member can mm -hmm. relatively CC effectively, and it's not just a slow. It's not some sort of soft CC. So what their team fights are going to look like is more likely or not trying to stack their CC on the squishiest people in the back line, get through that front line and mur the back line, then rotate up and try and kill them. Either that, or they might, they have a very good team of turning it around and creating a rat league situation where they start going <laughs> rat for a, yeah, rat league, where they start, instead of trying to team fight, they avoid every single team fight and just go straight up for ganks. I imagine that, uh, Malphite Oriana would be a very brutal combination when trying to go after someone just trying to farm in the jungle. Um, if they can create room for the Caitlyn, which is exactly what this team is supposed to be able to do, they have a pretty good shot of just doing a bunch of damage and pretty much uh, making sure that they get a, a good good amount of uh, kills and team fights under their belt before the halfway mark. So now I have to uh, try and switch the game. I think uh, I don't think my computer likes me, actually, so I'm going to have to if you have something else to talk about, that might be a good time to mention it. <clears throat> You're completely right. Yes, I do want some water. I'll be right back. All right. That's a very good time to get water exactly when okay. I don't need you to leave. All right. So let's see. I go to the game, and it's probably going to be a black screen because the window is, like, uh, weird and whatnot. So, yeah. So when it comes to uh, skin battles, Oriana still doesn't have a skin. Very unfortunate. That uh, puts uh, Champlain team already behind. But, uh, and everyone on their team, I think that's Diamond? Looks like Diamond. Very Diamondy. <laughs> Alright, now I'm gonna fix it so that hopefully everyone else can actually watch the game. Do 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 Whoops. Do 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 Fixed! And there we go. Alright, cool. And I'm gonna reorganize the bar so that people don't complain.
complain about it because people love the fact that these bars. Shout out to cats. That's the moral of the story here. Don't trust cats. Cats are good people. Yeah, Catsby's joining us tonight on the analyst desk. What do you think, Catsby? He's quiet tonight. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, I, I agree with that. I that's a apt assessment of this game. Um, all, all right, right so. use that middle mouse to move around the map. Can't uh, can't drag it because people complain about that too. So let's do this. All right, uh, Pink's coming out already from the Champlain team. All right, so if you see uh, in the jungle top side um, by the river, uh, you're going to see Echo and Gragas have no idea the other is there. This is going to sure? be real funny real quick. I mean, is I this like a, is this a ships in the night scenario here? Are they just like, ooh, yep. and Echo. Gragas knows. Yeah, Echo decides to back up really quick. Big Ward's coming out from Alistar here, making sure that the their blue buff will probably be secure. I think Echo's probably going to head for Gr uh, Gromp first and secure that and lock <laughs> that shit yeah. down. All of uh, oh, yeah, all of blue team here, kind of congregating near the red buff. I'm think they're either anticipating a steal or they're just kind of being a little bit uh, a little bit uh, just just taking it safe. I mean, they have no reason to be there yet. Oh, but we're gonna see. I see Cluster and Poppy either rotating the top. Up. They might steal. Oh, uh, lane first. swap, lane swap, lane swap. Uh, yeah, they're probably gonna start Gromp and then just stay on top. You figure they're gonna stay on top? Oh yeah, oh yeah. How do you Let's be honest. Against, like Malphite won't have anything to do in the early game. Like he won't be able to deal with all their combined poke and harass. Of course, and since it's not according to the meta, our team will have nothing, <laughs> no idea what to do. And then yeah, Trundle could definitely handle himself over there in a uh, bottom lane. Of course, two v one with all of his crazy sustain for the minions dying, he can definitely just tower farm pretty safely. No, this is pretty pretty good. If you could shut down this Malphite, however, it doesn't matter how hard you shut down a Malphite. Yeah, it's Malphite like, is good at all points in the game. Exactly, well, Malphite. Points, will, once, once he hits Malphite, his ult. <laughs> yeah, once he hits level six, he's gonna find, find assists, find gold. But I guess the further you keep him away from level six, the better time you're going to have. But in the bottom lane, though, here's the big sacrifice you're making, though. You're sacrificing completely bottom lane, which is Alistar and Caitlyn, which means that that gives Alistar opportunity to roam and to go, you know, find more. Kills. Hashtag roaming Alistar meta is coming back. I've seen it in a few games. I've seen it work. I mean, I'll start Rome. Hashtag yeah. season two, boys. Or season yeah. one. I don't know. Whatever season it was. Whatever. Uh, well, he is the roaming support. That's his uh, his identity, I guess. And top lane, already reaching uh, level three. Holy shit. <laughs> Before yeah, Malphite could even reach level two. And already top and here's lane. Here's Trundle. Oh, three top. Is this a, 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 a trio lane? Hashtag Dota boys. Dude, ha hashtag tri lane. I've been waiting years for this. <laughs> Finally, the tri lane is in Dota. Yeah. Okay, and here we are. We're gonna see Echo give some more support. Oh, they're Poppy going in really, really hard to this Echo. There he has strategy. to jump out of there, but that's a really early kill, and they can't really punish him for that. Yeah, that's Poppy can kind of walk out of that. Yeah, very nice play from Poppy though, charging outside of it and then basically tanking the tower just for a little bit. Um, I'm not First sure what they're First blood goes to the. Um, and they get a stun off, and they get RPG. another kill in the top lane. This is uh. Not looking good already. This is fairly rough. We have uh, the tower aggro alternating between them so that no one actually takes too much damage. And they might get a tower early. This might be one of the earliest towers I think I've ever seen. Yeah, very brutal. Malphite getting rocked there. Nothing you can do about that. Yeah, slam up against the wall and uh, crumble to pieces, as it were. <clears throat> as it were. As it were. Hashtag gravel boys. Gravel boys. So, yeah, ping's coming out. Top lane. The jungle Gragas going in. Um, strategy's going to surprise him real quick. He wards Gragas. Didn't expect that. Jumps in Echo, dashes out of it. Ooh, it takes comes a little out, bit of damage on the cask, but it's perfectly fine. And top First goes tower down. goes to the RMU team. So uh, I, think, I think this should be mentioned real quick. Yep. That uh, when you take a top tower, or when you take any kind of tower by that, you give your enemy more room to farm safely. So you give them more space to kind of yep. farm within their own area. So it kind of balances out. So taking a tower early is a very strategic decision. They purposely went in with that idea that they're going to take that tower early and maybe just let Malphite deal with the repercussions of that. See, now they're rotating back bottom lane, hopefully before their tower gets taken out. But even if their tower gets taken out in that time, they get a good trade from it because that means Callista has more room to farm as opposed to just a Malphite. Yep. And you definitely want Callista to have more room to farm than just a Malphite. But it's a good bit of gold to have until then, and Callista already going hard to this Caitlyn. Caitlyn forcing all the way back, but they don't see the poppy that's hiding in the bush here, being very heavy into the into the sneak plays. And, and uh, there he is, engaging on Alistair. Has to go Alistair realizes he's pretty far away. Yeah. Knocks her up. Alistair knocks her up, walks yeah. out of there. They're okay. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. Ooh, that was uh, really, so, 
really rough play. I, I guess she was supposing that there was someone there. So in the bottom lane, Trundle is roaming around with them. She he's pretty much conceding that top lane, and I think they're going just they're playing the tower game really early. Yeah. So very, very solid team here. Caitlyn tried to go back, but there's absolutely no opportunity to. And now hopefully Malphite has communicated to them the dangers of trying to stay underneath your tower when you're, you know, dealing with this kind of comp between the the Trundle, the Poppy, and the Callista. And uh, Gragas is behind them, but here comes Echo, and they're going in. Big knockups coming from the Alistar, going right into that Callista, trying to get up. The exhaust comes out, but she's there out of there. Is. But never mind, in the back line, gets killed Alistair, by the Caitlyn. health. TP from Malphite coming up. He's not level 6, so Alistair it doesn't really matter. Down. But Alistar goes down to the Trundle. Yeah, Alistair definitely staying a little bit too long. Mm -hmm. That was a good one for one trade, but a very expensive TP coming from that Malphite, who really couldn't have done anything in that situation. But he really wants to do something. Also, TP from Trundle going up top to try and get the farm like, at the tower. But Malphite really wants to apply some pressure here, but I don't think his team is healthy enough to really deal with this. I mean, they're okay. It's just uh, Kayla's out of mana, so she can't pull up for a lot of harass right now. Um, and e the longer they wait, the no less, mana. less safe they are. Yeah. Uh, so Gragas is coming around. He's level 4. He's got full health and full mana. He's going to go goes Gragas. Just doing some damage. But Malphite definitely booking him out. Oh, it looks like they're in the lead. Oh, misses the E. But Caitlyn, just doing a good amount of damage, but it forces her to waste her TP, or not waste her TP, sorry. Delay her backing until a, a later Speaking time. Speaking of delays, Aaron says you're a little bit too quiet. Hashtag. A, hashtag, I don't know what um, you want. <laughs> thanks for, uh, uh, thank you to our sound guy this season, um, Aaron, um, for listening to us and uh, telling us if we're too quiet or too loud sometimes. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate it. It's just, I wish, uh, I didn't change the name. Perfect. What do you mean yeah, I, I changed the name? I, uh, I mean, I used to in pregame. I don't know about you. Hashtag, uh, um, uh, ward cleared. Ooh, another ward clear. Vision denial. All right, hold on one second. I'm going to fix my audio. Hopefully that will that will be uh, pretty good. I'll fix that. A little bit too. I'll fix that uh, re right quick, Enna. All right. Hashtag real quick audio fix. Yeah, real, real quick. Uh, on the fly fixing, as they call it. But uh, blue buff, they've pushed them back and they're secure. But Poppy going in oh, really oh, hard against this Caitlyn. Poppy stopping that dash. Does a good amount of damage, but Poppy is Poppy. They can't really capitalize on that. But right here, Zareth going really hard to the Oriana, but Zareth flash. uses his flash to get out of the ult. Zareth over the wall. But while this is happening, Callista is just kind of poking down this Ooh, tower. Just done. There's Zareth engaging. Oh, there's a Ooh. shield. Going really hard to it. He doesn't have his Zareth. flash. Echo might just be able to do enough damage here to stop him, and they get it's the kill on Zareth. In the kill, here it is. And bottom lane, they kind of push him out, or uh, push them back away from the tower. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. In the top lane, Malphite, again, getting that farm, but he's still not level 6 yet. So it's a little bit unfortunate, and there it is. 6. And there we go, it's level 6. I'm going to take care of that blue ward with that pink, and maybe get red at this time? No, it's not the uh, Dimitri, your voice is butter, end quote, uh, the Mink 86. Shout out to the Mink 86. My Letting voice is butter? butter. Oh, what does that um, mean? Is that, is uh, that... It's smooth and nice and kind it's, of it's savory. Ch it's churny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hashtag churny voice. Churny Meanwhile, voice. Uh, I have my uh, traditional husky kind of voice. It well, works. Sexy. It Shout works, though. The, it's the actor voice, but going right into the Caitlyn, setting her against the wall and doing a bunch oh. of damage, but very good knockout from the Alistair. I'm just waiting for this poppy to kind of uh, wreck face, realistically. Smooth and creamy, end Ooh. quote, about to be true's voice. Those are uh, two descriptions of a voice that are very... Uh... <laughs> Those are two descriptions of a voice. <laughs> Those are certainly descriptions. <laughs> so, alright, so things are calming down for a little bit. Um, so, we'll talk about the, the macro, as it were. Um, the macro. So, overall, we've seen one tower taken um, by each team. Mm -hmm. The top lane tower taken by the RMU team, and bottom line tower taken by the Champlain team. Um, so it's a mirror, as it were. Of course. Um, we're seeing lots of roaming by everybody. Overall, CS counts are fairly low this game, um, given we're at about the 10-minute mark. Pretty low CS counts. Um, Malphite with 33 CS. That being said, he was dealing with the tri-lane, so this is to be expected. Um, as always, our poor top laner, shout out to Stinkerdoodle for dealing with all the bullshit this season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, realistically, top lane has not, have a good, not had a good time. Oh my god, the poor guy. So there's there's that tri lane. Um, hard time for him. Can't blame him there. Um, we're seeing Trundle with about a 20 CS lead on him. That's a little rough. Jungle's about even. Mid lane's about even. Support doesn't matter. And bottom lane, we're seeing a 10 CS lead in the RMU, aka Caitlyn, direction. Um, 
Yeah, we're slowly getting there. Um, things are developing over this game. I wouldn't say either team has a clear lead. I mean, objectively, the Argu team has a lead. They took another tower when I was talking, meanwhile. Um, and they took another uh, 2k gold, two kills up. So it's the rule of two, really. So the RMU team is up a little bit, but it's not a lot. It's anyone's game right now. A lot of crazy things are happening. Yeah. Alpha going around. Looks like he wants to alt in real quick. And he spotted it, and he gets right <laughs> Ping's coming out, too. They, oh, they really sense bad. the poppy. They Looks feel... Like like, uh, Champ is trying to force a dragon fight right now, but Poppy's trying to defend it. Keep it off. It is warded. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, Malphite still ha I'm not sure. I haven't seen Malphite use his ult yet, and uh, Malphite with his ult off cooldown is just kind of a waste at this Seriously. point. Seriously. He could, uh, could really, really use it. <clears throat> so, The thing yeah, is that if you do use it, you essentially neutralize yourself for the next time, like two minutes, however long. It's true, but it's super powerful, and they might be able to get a really good Dude, kill out of it. Dude, you need to use it. You need to use it the right time, though. Just using it willy-nilly. Well, I'm, not, I'm not saying you use it willy-nilly. I'm just saying you need to open yourself up to find an opportunity to use it. Yeah, you're completely right. He should be in mid lane right now, trying to force a fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, I mean, top lane getting some farm, trying to get back to whatever advantage he lost is... And here's the fight. Too, but here's right here would be a good time to use it against this Gragas. Oh, Level 6, he's got it all. Gragas. Pops good. it, but he pops oh, the flash, and there he goes, using it, getting the kill on Gragas. But that puts him in a bad position, but blue team is not going to capitalize on trying to take him out. Switch on there? Um, they're all... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, wow. Good play. <laughs> um, Ooh, big stun's coming out, getting that echo as he crosses over the wall, and uh, Zerath is being pretty safe here. Ooh, pops the ult, trying to get the kill on the echo, and he finally does. And Poppy going in, knocking up return against the wall. Alstar being as currently tanky as he is, pops his ult, but he might be able to... <laughs> he, he finally does get out of there, and Oriana pops her ult as well, and... Knocks them all back and makes sure that you don't lose your support. Oh, spoke a little too soon. That That's snipe coming from long, Zerath. Long range. What's that? range. Long, long range on the um, Zerath. Hard to deal with. Yeah, realistically, they lost two because of him. Yeah. And a uh, big pillar, just this mountain of filth, just making sure they uh, take the tower very safely. Yep, so now that they have a secure tower lead, especially in the mid lane and the bottom lane, that opens up Dragon for blue team if they want to take it. Pops some wards down, and they're in a very good defensible location. Gragas calls for help. He engages. That being said, looks like... Uh, well, okay, they're backing up. This engage nothing happening yet. I'm not <clears> sure. engaging, uh, mm -hmm. engaging on the Dragon. I'm not sure if Red Team, or, you know, Champlain Team, really wants to do this, really wants to go in here, so that's an easy Dragon for Arn. Yep. Oh, and also, RMU also took the Rift Herald and gave the Trundle. Oof. That's two objectives. You said the Ooh. rule of two. I mean, they're doing oh, it. And there it is. The classic two technique. Mm hmm Except they have three they towers, but you know. Nets for nothing. <laughs> three towers, but who's counting? Yeah, I mean, we are, but... I mean, the difference <laughs> is two, but, you know, alas. But they need to start shutting down uh, some of the bigger players here. They need to start shutting down this... Uh, this Callista, and then you start shutting down this, uh, Callista. Yep. Oh, <laughs> wow, uh, Callista and Zerath, sorry. And he flashed but, uh, it back out. There goes Echo. They almost killed him. I mean, yeah, that's, that's rough. I mean, Callista with her Bork is pretty scary in the early Poppy game. might just try and finish him off, too. He, I'm not sure, he Poppy. hasn't used his ult yet, but the ward comes out, and she's, she's forced back by the Caitlyn and the Alistair. Alright. And that's how you do it in the top lane. Trundle making use of that uh, little Baron buff and uh, pushing out his lane. But again, gives out gives Malphite a little bit more time to get some really good farm, or you know, decent farm at the very least. But the bottom lane pings are coming out. They really want to do something here. Both teams are kind of eyeing each other, and red team especially pinging out the poppies in the jungle, <clears throat> telling everyone to be very very careful. She's very been, uh, very it's only been 14 minutes, yet Poppy has been a very huge playmaker here for uh, making sure that uh, RMU can be big when it comes to it. And Alistar going I'll really hard into it, but pops the ult out, and Poppy knocks back Caitlyn. There goes the ADC. And they're switching right back to the Alistar. Alistar pops his ult, but it might be a little bit too much damage. Still, still alive somehow. Oh, but Trundle TP'd in, Ooh, getting the kill on Echo. Down. Gets the kill on Alistar, going in really hard for this Caitlyn, and Gragas Flash okay, popping power, out. Getting out of there. Malpha getting stunned, ouch. And now he loses his engage. Ooh, and they're going back into the Orianna. Orianna at low health, and she's probably gonna get killed. And speak of it, she does. Looks like he won't be able to get out. Oh, he flashes. I don't think it's gonna be worth it here, Clista. Ooh, and, and there's the Zerath. And the KS coming from Zerath <laughs> in the back line. Zerath KSing them. 
Yeah, exactly. Popping the ult and uh, getting the kill here. That was a very big play for blue team. Very, very nice job setting up perfectly to kind of focus down one at a time. Especially, uh, especially the Alistar. They kind of, they still did a good amount of damage through his ult, even. So, I mean, this definitely, they're definitely playing like a team that knows what they're doing when it comes to these rotations. When it comes to these like very, very good objectives. All around from the RMU team. Mm -hmm. um, Misery Pancakes gives a shout out to Dimitri with the shoutcasting. Who says that? Misery Pancake, he's a producer, right? I don't know Maybe. who that is. Hashtag, um, who is mis uh, Misery Pancake? <laughs> I Hashtag, who is Misery Pancake? Uh, it's it's going to be an exhibition of Clue. I, I see it coming. Clue? Yeah, you know, you know the video game Clue? <laughs> the video game, wow. Let's go to Champlain College. Wow. <laughs> board game Clue, where they're like, oh, you know, it was... It was, um... It was, it was, uh... It was Becca in the computer labs with a priori. You know, stuff like that. Oh! That's my trick. That's actually my trigger. <laughs> oh! oh. It's Shout out to Jill. Oh, hey, shout outs. All right. Who is your producer? Huh? Isn't, aren't are they your producer? No, Ben's my producer, but speaking of producers, uh, Malphite's getting uh, produced to death here. Out of the RMU team. <laughs> yeah, going really hard into that Malphite, but Malphite kind of walks away. That's very lucky, and Poppy, I don't think they can reasonably kill him. And two wards going into the bush. As we've said, the rule of two. <laughs> but Poppy, not TPing, just kind of putting the ward out and waiting for them to leave Caitlyn alone. They don't have a sight of her, so she might be able to pick off a good kill here, especially since Callista is here. Callista's got the old up, but you see the tether. They know Poppy's here. Mm -hmm. They can see the tether, right? And there's the ward. Uh, I think they can. I'm not sure. Okay, here's Gragas. It is warded, though. But they're going really hard. Pops the speed was trying to go right after the thing, but Alistar being the sacrificial uh, sacrificial cow here. Going right in to make sure that Caitlyn doesn't die, but big flash coming out from the Gragas, and it blows up Caitlyn. There goes the Gragas ult. And Alistar might die too. It's gonna rip him out. Gets the kill on the Callista. Very nice job. And Alistar's still alive, but Poppy. Switch your attention back to the Oriana. This is did not shape well for Gragas. Gets the kill. Snack. Wow, a very, very good place on Alistair right there. I did not think he'd survive that one. No, I didn't think so either, but they focused all their attention to the Caitlyn and Big Ult's coming out trying to get the kill on Alistar, but he dodges all of them except for one, and that's all he needs. Yeah. That's all he needs to live. He's out of return. Mm -hmm. Good, good answer from Champlain team to what blue team was pushing on the top lane. Yep. So they're down uh, six kills. They're down around eight k. Three towers and a dragon. Um, in top lane, Malphite has half CS of Trundle, um, about equal in the jungle. Um, mid lane is about equal. Supports about equal, and around a twenty-ish, twenty-five CS lead towards the RMU team on Callista. So definitely we're seeing the advantage go towards the RMU team right now. That being said, I don't think it's over yet. I do think that the Champlain team is a much better team fight, especially with people like Echo, with Alistair, with Oriana, with Malphite, just all popping all their AoE damage and CC all at once. That of would course. Be but, would delete anyone. Yeah. The issue, however, though, is with all their CC and with all the damage they have, is trying to get it all off. The enemy team, uh, RMU that is, what we've seen is that they've been very, very good at picking off like one one or two people like in the beginning of a fight to make sure that Champlain's team fight is crippled from the very get-go. Yep, yep. Also, really uh, taking out uh, Rift Herald really quick I there. So that's their second Rift Herald. Very interesting. You see some teams, some games go by without a team taking it, but base, RMU seems to see the advantage in having it. So yeah, the CC from Champlain's team is definitely great. We mentioned that before when the picking phase and the or the post picking phase when we were waiting for uh, the game to actually start. But they have to get it all off, and if they kill someone without them getting their like their ult off or their CC off, then it's effectively a crippled team fight from the very beginning. Especially since the fact that their team is considerably tanky, realistically. You know, the, and their whole team is, I mean, the RMU team is really good at disrupting, I should say. Like, I mean, like, with exactly. Kalisi, they'll save someone, with Gragas with this ult to just mix them all up, uh, with Trundle just being very sustaining and dropping in this pillar to interrupt people, with Gragas with his ult, knock people around with Zareth, just providing so much disruption with his ult. I mean, that being said, it, it is hard for the Champlain team to gauge as well. Of course. Like I said, you can see what Trundle just did right now. Just split up Caitlyn from the rest of the team. Yep. And like, even that, it wasn't a team fight. Team right there, yeah. Even if it wasn't a team fight, it's still... Oh! Malphite, 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 Malphite going in really hard, but the big cast comes out! Mm. Trying to get a team fight, but this is a bad position already for Champlain. The damage coming out from Kalista. Kalista trying to get the kill on Echo. Echo has to pop the ult, and they're all hunting him down. Alistar pops his ult, but Caitlyn 
the weapon. back line, just trying to do what damage she can to the trundle, but trundle is just a little bit too tanky. And already the disruption coming out, getting the kill on the Orianna. <laughs> Caitlyn has to run in the back lines. Alistair finally dies. All right, so. Yeah, and like we were talking about, that's exactly it. It's that they try to force a fight, they try to engage something, but then all the disruption coming from everyone else knocks the whole team out. They, they separate And they get them. confused. They, it disrupts whatever formation, whatever plan they had, and they don't have a counter to it. And then, and that's what they're going for. The, the RMU team is doing a really good game of Rat League. Yeah, which is surprising. I thought our team was going to be doing that. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, right? We're wrong for once. But either way, though, well, I mean... Rat League would be going after, uh, what you call it, going after single players by themselves and not avoiding team or avoiding team fights. They're fully welcoming team fights. They're even going so far as to not engage them. They, they're perfectly comfortable with the level of counter engage that they have. That they're not going to start any kind of team fights. And Malphite has to choose someone and try and get a kill here, but Zera stun stops him in place. Malphite clearing the pink ward. Blue doing, team bings help against the pink ward. Ooh, doing, goes down. Doing God's work, truly. So it's 15 to 5 right now. Champlain is uh, 10 kills behind. Of course, kills don't mean everything, but towers do. They're also four towers behind, two dragons. So that makes uh, RMU's pushing potential incredibly great. Uh, second dragon being buffed to what it is is very powerful against, you know, we're very powerful coupled with the amount of pushing that their team has, especially when it comes to auto attack. So, do you want to ask uh, how Champlain's going to dig themselves out of this one, or climb their way um, out of this pit? Uh, well, um, Aaron asked to uh, talk about a quick match. Uh, earlier today, had a 15-minute bot game. I think it was the first game we ever had. There's a quick match for you. Anyway, back to the game. Um, quick match? What does that mean? Uh, I think it was referring to this game, but it's not over yet. Absolutely, it is not over yet, Aaron. No, it's not. I'll tell you why. Here's what Champlain can do. Champlain, um, they need to try to force a good fight as an objective. They're behind. They know it. they got to accept it. They have to wait for them to try to force a fight at like Dragon, something like that. Wait for that to go, and when they're all in the pit together, because that's when they're all be corralled in the same spot. Over in the jungle, try to keep fighting. If they try to keep fighting in the jungle, they're gonna keep dying. They of cannot course. fight in the jungle with this team. With um, Trundle intercepting someone in the jungle, with um, Poppy knocking them out with their hammer, things like that. There's really nothing that they can do. Try to force a fight in the jungle, that'd be a bad spot. They need to try to force fights in open spots or at objectives. This team, mm. Champlain team, is great at objectives. Tremendous objective control. We're gonna see with Oriana with everyone on their team. Oof, the damage coming out from Zara is already going onto oh, this Caitlyn and gets wow. the kill before she can get her arrow off. Shut up. Oh, yeah, okay. So let's take a moment to talk arrow. about this. Zarath is Net. 8 and 1. Yes, yeah, they haven't touched this Zarath. Yeah, Zarath getting really big. So, I think what they need to do is they need to avoid these team fights. I don't think they can fight team fights anymore. I think it's it's too far gone at this point. Yeah. Zarath is too large to to maintain himself in the back line. They, That's the thing, because not... yeah, Zerath's gotten so big, he can just kind of just force out, just free poke whenever he wants to. And of course. And meaningful too. But, and they can't touch him because the front line of RMU is just Gee, so freaking large. They have to play a little bit of Rat League again, as I said, and switch over to that and try and get these kills, but they're doing a very good job of not splitting up in Orianna already at half health and Echo. Not looking too healthy either, and this is pretty bad considering that they're trying to push that top tower, but blue team actually, uh, it actually rotates back to mid. The big base here, off. and uh, Jamalfa doing his best. Yeah, and uh, Poppy trying off. to find a target, but then deciding to go on the Alistar instead. And they're already losing their base tower just in minions here. That bottom lane pushing out very hard. And uh, as they got that mid lane, as they got that inhibitor, they move their sights over to the top lane. And I don't think Champlain has the power to stop them now. They might have to just concede this one. Yeah. But the blue team Ooh, goes back. back. But, well, the damage already is just yeah, just really annoying. Just the poke, even when they, even just existing hurts for Champlain right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so one thing to take note of, um, looking at the builds, if you look, Gragas isn't actually building tank in this game. Gragas has gone pretty much full AP, it looks like. Of course, yeah. Yeah, he tracker's knife, 30 echoes. So Gragas is building AP item. Looks like he's probably um, with Blasting Wand and, Negatr and Negatron Cloak. He's probably gonna be building into the um, abyssal, of course, which is a pretty good, uh, a pretty good pick right yeah, now. Yeah, I wouldn't um, be surprised if after he builds that, he goes a little bit more tanky because yeah, I mean, the they have, enough, they have enough magic damage. Like that, Zerath is doing all their work for them. And now that they're fighting a Baron, this might be a chance for Champlain to come back. However, they have to do. They have to. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. They have to 
They have to the, the fight. We have to do this correctly, or else it's not worth doing at all. They can't. Yeah, and, and they can't pussyfoot foot this. And that was a little bit too late. Alistar yeah, jumps in there, and this might be. Was, yeah, he's was, dead. Um, nah, there was nothing. They had to all commit right. for it. They couldn't just go around it lightly. Now, if they were all there, that would have been it. But of course, they would have. They wouldn't have done it if, if they were all out. So. It would have been a good. Up in ten seconds. It would have been a good attempt, but as it stands, though, it was just. That's it. It was just dead. Whew. Okay, so things are very much in the RMU favor. Mm-hmm. We got twelve kills in their favor, which, of course, is you know again can't count kills for everything, but it's a pretty good indicator. <laughs> so we also have seven towers in their favor too. Um, one inhibitor down, the other one respawns. So you got that advantage going for you too. Dragon's up for uh, for RMU to take their third, so that will give them the movement speed, that will give them a way better positioning in team fights, which they already have a lot of, so the rich get richer. Yep. <clears throat> this is a hard one, it's a hard one to watch. In the top lane, um, Malphite trying to do something, but Poppy is perfectly Malph capable of soloing him. Yeah, I mean, w with the, the cannon minion, with... yeah. Baron buff. I mean, not much else can do right now. No, okay, it's, kind of wait to farm under tower. It's one of those games where it's really rough because even even solo, they're a force. They, they all rotate with. right on time. Yeah, Take top, top real quick. Top falls down. And while they're doing that, Trundle's taking the inhibitor bottom lane. They can't really focus their attention away from that. They have to kind of. And it can't really. I mean, this, this now Ooh, is really cool. half this health is already. The oh, and there oh, it is. Dead. Just, Obliterated. Oh, Knocks, knocks ADC out of the fight, they can't do but anything. But the ult comes out and gets the kill on her, too. They're going really hard here, but the only people left are the tanky ones, and the tanky ones just aren't yeah. going to do the damage. Or you know, actually, surprisingly, not well, yeah. and as I say that, Poppy going hard, going deep to try and get the kill, and she's in the well, but still taking damage from the Callista. Callista going in, and ooh, Seraph gets the kill, but also kills himself. And they go for the towers, and the GG is called. That's it. There's the GG. Wow. That was an impressive game right there. Shout out to the RMU team. Very, very good plays. Mm -hmm. Good teamwork, good that, communication. Honestly, that was a really good team comp. No, it was. They played it very well. They knew exactly they what they were doing. Well. Yeah. I was impressed with all the displays, all the knockups, just all the, the confusion in that team. Of with course. With Trundle, with um, Callista, with um, Gragas, with Zara. I mean, everyone in that team. Well, well, the whole team was focused around moving people around. Like, Gragas, Callista, Trundle, and Poppy were all good at confusing people. Poppy's all good knockback with her... Um, W to stop hard to gauge stop movement with her uh, <clears throat> with her E, knock people around. Um, Gragas's alt, Gragas's um, dashes, Callista's alt, um, Trundle's pillars, things like that, just knocking up the whole team. And then there was Zerath. Once people were kind of mixed up, knocked around, Zerath showed up, and because the whole team had been dispersed, he just kind of dealt all his damage on whoever he wanted to. Of course. So I think I, I definitely think I mean, we were we were confused at first, but now after having watched the game, we, we understand that pick. It was Most, yeah. Like, well, I wasn't <laughs> I uh I wasn't actually too confused with the the pick. I I kind of anticipated the fact that uh that they were going to do something like that. Their front line was very noticeable. It was Gragas, Trundle, and Poppy, and Zerath being incredibly long range was pretty safe there, and his safety has kind of like led him to just steamroll the enemy team like they just they did not have an answer for him they couldn't get past the wall they couldn't get past his damage eventually and they weren't ganking enough to actually like shut him down so it was just kind of a matter of time before Zerath just vaporized the team so uh yeah already we're uh getting ready for game two here so i'm gonna bring down the stream and uh fix bring it back up what's up fix the goddamn title I'll fix the title. Don't worry. Right, well, I'm going to bring down the stream, and I'm going to bring it back up for game two. So, And we'll be right back. Yeah, and we'll be back.